Hi everyone, it's me, and today let's watch this video together. Game exchange, culture shock. Hey everyone, Gaijin Goomba here. Hello, Gaijin Goomba. And welcome to another jolt of culture and video games. You know what I love so very much about this job? The Ooh. fact that a single small detail of a game can have huge, epic roots in culture. An epic aspect completely roots. overlooked by the player can have some of the richest cultural inspiration than anything else in the game. And That's today's simple. topic is a perfect example of this. The Legend of Zelda! A Link to the Past! Oh my god! Wow! Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> In a Link to the Past, within the Dark World, there's a catfish at the Lake of Ill Omens that gives Link the Quake Medallion after he tosses something into the Ring of Stones. Okay. Said medallion gives Link the ability to do a screen clearing move by invoking a powerful earthquake, <clears throat> as well as access to Turtle Rock. That's a very strong AoE. To the player, that's it. Catfish, medallion, oh. done. But oh dear theorist, you have no idea what secrets this incredibly minor detail of the game houses. Now I'm sure you're wondering what the heck a delicacy of the southern United States and one of the deadliest natural disasters have in common. A delicacy and a new... The answer to that lies in 18th century Japan. At this time, there was a belief in massive catfish called Namazu, who dwelled underneath the islands of Japan. As one of the yokai, oh. they were mischief makers and bringers of mortal trouble. When they wriggled, their movements caused all manner of earthquakes, big and small. What? So you're telling me that a catfish caused an earthquake? Oh, that is kind of hard to believe. Yeah. Knowing just that, looking back to Link to the Past, the connection is just so obvious. This catfish character outright gives Link the ability to make earthquakes after causing an earthquake to get out of the water. To the average player, this may seem like an incredibly strange thing, or they may just suspend their disbelief and... Um, okay, I guess... Sweet! Catfish... Uh, chalk please? up the earthquake giving catfish to a natural quirk of a fantasy setting. But no! It's got purpose! And we haven't even gotten started with all of the cultural parallels. The Namazu activity caused so many problems in Japan that it became the sole duty of Kashima, also known in ancient Japan as Takemikazuchi, a god of thunder and swords to restrain these titanic beasts and quell their rumblings. Sometimes he's depicted pinning the beast down with a sword, but the most popular ukiyo-e paintings of the 18th century shows that he uses a massive stone to keep the beast pinned down and unable to move. So it's a stone. Should Kashima a rock? lower his guard, the Namazu will break free and cause even more earthquakes with just the slightest movement. Going back to Link to the Past, there's two incredibly small details that have huge references. The Circle of Stones and the method in which you summon the Catfish character. Now most people would see the Circle of Stones as a way of telling the player that there's something very special here. But culturally uh. speaking, this represents a prison. Kashima classically uses massive stones to imprison Namazu according to all of these 18th century ukiyo-e prints. Oh, so it was imprisoned in a cage by rocks? Um, okay. How would this not be any different? Regardless of what the Holy Grail may have told us, rocks do not float. A complete circle of stones would have to extend all the way to the river's bottom in order for this geological formation to appear. True. And the catfish character comes in and out of the middle of it. It's trapped. Boom! Perfect cultural Ooh. parallel. Second, you can summon the catfish character by throwing anything into the circle of stones. But what are you going to instinctively throw? Bombs? Probably not as the player instinctively will save bombs for enemies in cracked walls. The next True. best thing? The thing that the map section is abundant in? Rocks. Well, they look like skulls, but they're evil parallel dimension rocks. Um, mm, mm. What happens when you throw in said rock? It stirs up the catfish character and gives you the medallion if you promise to leave him alone. But what happens if you keep throwing in rocks? He attacks you with fireballs and bombs. Bearing in mind the method in which Namazu are imprisoned, doesn't it make sense from a cultural perspective that this guy would get super irritated that you keep hitting him with the very thing that keeps him bound in the first place? It's such a small detail but has a huge cultural inspiration. Lastly, the lake itself. It's called the Lake of Ill Omen, which at first glance to the player seems kind of out of place. What Ill Omen does it speak of? Most just continue through the game without a second thought. But for you guys watching this video, up to this point, you might be thinking, Oh, Ill Omen, if that catfish guy gets loose, the sacred land is kinda screwed. Even more so than it is now with Ganon. <laughs> and while that's a very astute observation, there's another more detailed explanation to that name. Namazu in Japan's culture didn't start in the 18th century. Their presence was actually dated back as far as the 15th century. Wow. At that time, they 
three centuries apart. They were seen as benevolent river deities. Namazu would bring warnings of floods and other natural disasters, and on occasion, they would prevent them by stopping or swallowing whole the river dragons who were, at the time, considered to be the chief causes of these kinds of natural disasters. Oh. It wasn't until the Great Edo Earthquake in October of 1855 that the Namazu were depicted as the culprits. And now the lake's name and link to the past makes even more sense. Back in the 15th century, these giant catfish were bringers of ill omens. And the associations here have just become so much more obvious. In any case, I hope this episode shows you all just how amazing even the smallest aspect of a game can be when it's compared to its cultural inspiration. I mean, I just got done spending minutes talking about a tiny minor aspect in A Link to the Past that I'm sure that most players didn't even spend a second on. Well, um, um, true. And that's what my work's all about, finding these little things and teaching about how they have such a huge cultural impact. But that's all for this episode of Culture Shock. But hey, if you want some more of my hey. personal thoughts on the Zelda games as a whole, I did a gigantic retrospective about the entire series back in January on my channel. So if you want to weigh in on your opinion too, well, just click right here, and I'll see you on the other side. Thank you so much. Oh my god, this video is very educational, knowledgeable, and wisdom filled. Thank you so much. If you do like this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and comment down below if you have anything to share with us. Don't forget to follow my channel and hope to see you in my next video. Thank you so much. But hey, that's just a game. A game exchange! Culture Shock. Thanks for watching. Thank you. And subscribe! <laughs>